guys. Welcome again. So last time we have seen 1.1 to 1.3 of this book, we say Myers and Myers, well, Paul, Myers, Myers. Uh, 1.1 and 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Let me just revise some of the things. Finally, we ended up with the mean and median. I told you there are some advantages. So there are some disadvantages in both the cases. Mean is nothing but take the sum of all the observations and divide by the number of observations. And that is denoted by X bar. And uh, it is very sensitive to outliers. Otherwise, it is really very easy to compute. It includes all the observation. And uh, then after median, that was like this Xn plus one by two if n is or, and Xn by two plus Xn by two plus one if n is even. Make sure when you write X, second part Xn by two plus one, that Xn by two that is in the bracket. So first you need to divide by Xn by two and then add one, otherwise you will be wrong. And resistance to outliers. So it is, that's really good part, but uh, need to sort data and not as mathematically tractable as the mean and some loss of information. So we are going to solve some examples based on this one too. And uh, then after I give you an example, now I would like to give you one more definition that is called the variance. Variance, for variance, you have to have the mean. You can see over here, this mean is there, X bar. So Xi minus X bar, Xi, that is the X1, X2, X3, these are your observations. So subtract all the observations, I mean, it's a mean from all the observations, take the square and then divide by n minus one. Number of observations, suppose 20, so 20 minus one is 19. That's the definition, that is S squared, that is called this variance, sample variance. And sample standard deviation, sample standard deviation, because we are talking about the sample, so I told you last time that I'm going to give you some detail about the sampling methods. And there are plenty, uh, four or five types of sampling methods. We will be going through that thing very shortly once we are done with this part. So uh, standard deviations or simple standard deviation, that is something but S equal to square root of S squared. So if you take the positive square root of this one, you're going to get that is the simple standard deviation. So we have one example over here. And if you go through this example, you will come to know the parts which I really would like to let you know. Uh, for this example, I would like to switch over to my whiteboard so that you will come to know the things very easily. Just keep in mind this thing, or I'm going to write these numbers again for you. These are the numbers 3, 0, 2, 4, 1, 8, 2, and 2. So we are going to work with these numbers. So let me now share my uh, whiteboard so that how we can calculate mean, median, variance, and standard deviation for the samples that all these four parts you will come to know. Let me stop setting this one and let me set my, set my whiteboard with these numbers. So, <coughs> this is my whiteboard and let me write the numbers. The numbers were um, three, zero, two, four, one, eight, two, and two. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, three, zero, let me rewrite again because I think, uh, I need some more space. So three, zero, two, then four, then one, and then eight, then two and two. These are the numbers. Okay. For mean, we don't want the ascending order. Last time I told you, but for median, we want the ascending order. So first of all, let me do this thing. Let me find the mean. And you know that this is, I would say right now, this is my X1, this is my X2, this is my X3, X4, X5. This one is X6, X7, and X8. Means total number of observations, N is equal to eight. Total number of observations are eight. So I can find my mean. So mean is equal to, that is given by X bar and that is equal to summation of Xi, I runs from one to N. And some in your book, it is written like this, divided by N, but actually index is I. So N is independent. So in my opinion, yes, we can revise the definition given in the book. I would say that I equal to one to N and Xi, and I can take this N outside. That's the same thing, but I think this is more convenient than the given, the, than given in the book. So, what I'm going to do, Xi, the summation of Xi, that means I'm going to take the sum of all these numbers, three plus zero plus two plus four plus one, 
plus 8 plus 2 plus 2 and number of observations that is equal to 8. So divide by 8. So these numbers, if you use your calculators, I think we're going to get 3 plus 2, 5 plus 4, 9 plus 1, 10 plus 8, 18 plus 2, 20 plus 2, 22. So 22 divided by 8. And if you divide by 8, you're going to get that is equal to 2 point, I think 75. You can use your calculator. Sometimes I don't use calculator, but you can use your calculator. Now, so mean is uh, mean x bar is equal to 2.75. Now I want to go for the median. This is my mean. Now I would like to go for the median. So median, as I told you, that we require the ascending order of the given numbers. So, <laughs> excuse me. So the lowest number will come first, and then after we have to increase the number. So lowest one is zero over here. Then after we have one over here. Then after we have two times two and two. So two and two. <laughs> I think three times two and two. So two, two and two. And then after I would like to go for three and then after it is four and then after it is eight. Then after it is eight. So these are the numbers on the real, uh, real line. You can see like this. So this is again, this is my X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6, X7 and X8. So N is equal to eight. Let me rewrite the definition for median x bar is equal to, that is equal to x and n plus one divided by two. If your n is odd number, n is an odd number. And that is given by x n by two. Let me put the bracket, that's what I mean. Look at over here, plus x n by two and then plus one. So please don't make a mistake. And I would like to divide by two. So let me divide like, this divide by two. And this you can use when your n is an even number. You can see over here, my n equal to eight and n equal to eight is an even number. Oops, I think uh, I started some, oh, I'm sorry. Let me erase this part. Mm. n is equal to eight, okay. I'm sorry guys. So this n is equal to eight, n is equal to eight is an even number. So let me write even over here. Because n is, an, n is an even number, that means we are going to use the second part of the definition. Second part of the definition, that means I can find my x bar is equal to now. So our x tilde, I would say, x tilde, that is equal to x n by two. n by two, that means it is uh, eight by two, that is four. So I can say that is one by two, then x four, plus x n by two, eight by two is four plus one, five. So plus x five. You can see over here, my x4 that is over here, x5 is over here, x4 plus x5, that is two plus two. That is the position is two plus two and divided by two. So four divided by two, so that is equal to two. That means I'm getting my median that is equal to two. So my median is two and that lies over here. And you can see my mean was 2.75 and my median is two. I told you last time that mean and median, usually they are, they are really close to each other. Here we are getting little difference between mean and median because we have one outlier and there is eight. You can see over here, zero, one, two, three, four, they are just very near to each other. But then after immediate, we are getting the big number eight. There is nothing between four to eight because of because this eight, I would consider as an outlier because this is the outlier. And that's why there's a difference between our mean and median. So that is the reason, so don't get confused. And now I would like to go for the third definition. That is my variance, so V-A-R-I-A-N-C-E, variance. I, you know that definition for variance that is equal to S square is equal to, if you want, I can change the color so that probably you will come to know this thing. S square is equal to some is, oops, sorry, again. Okay. I don't know where that started. Um, that's fine, I will change the color later on. So S square is equal to, summation i is equal to 1 to n, i is equal to 1 to n, and xi minus x bar, that is my mean, whole square divided by n minus 1. This is the definition for the variance, definition for the variance. So what are we going to do? xi, that is nothing but this one, my numbers. So zero and mean, that is 2.75. So zero minus 2.75. So I can write, 0 minus 2.75 and its square. Plus my second number is one. So one minus 2.75 and square. My third number is two. 
So 2 minus 2.75 n square. We have 2, 3 times, so I would like to write 3 over here. Otherwise, you can calculate separately too. Plus 3 minus 2.75 n square plus 4 minus 2.75 n square plus 8 minus 2.75 n square and whole divided by your n minus 1, n is equal to 8 minus 1, that is equal to 7. Again, if this is 2, please keep in mind this thing, 2.75 mean value. So if you use your calculator, you're to, you going to get the square and square, all these things, probably you will be getting 41.5 divided by 7. And if you use again your calculator, you will be getting 5.93. So 5.93, that is your variance, or you can say sample variance sample variance and my standard deviation or sample standard deviation, sample s dot d dot, let me write like this, that is called sample standard deviation. That is as small s is equal to positive square root of this s square. So if you take the square root of this 5.93, approximately you will be getting 2.43, 2.43. You can see over here, the numbers are really very matching. So 2.4, that is a sample standard deviation. So that's how you can find the sample standard deviation, sample variance, mean, median, all four things, all four things. I can go over one more example and then after I would like to give you a couple examples in homework too, or you can solve in your free time. So uh, another example given to you in the book that is, uh, there are, last time we took one nitrogen example, that is uh, book uh, page number four. And I think uh, that was nitrogen and no nitrogen example. A number of data are there. You can take, first take the nitrogen data or no nitrogen data or consider all the data. Try to find all these four quantities, mean, median, variance, and standard deviation. Uh, then after you can go for another data for no nitrogen or nitrogen, whatever is left out. And again, you can find all these four things, mean, median, variance, and standard deviation. So that's the, that's the good practice. Let me go for one more example. May I erase this part? So I can erase this part. And now we can go for the another example. Mm, or I can save this one. Save PNG, save in the folders. Let me save this one. Okay. Think that's fine. Okay. Now let me erase this one. So erase spotlight stamp draw. I want to clear everything. So clear all drawings. So let me clear everything. And now let's start with the another example. So let me go for, uh, suppose blue line this time and draw and this one. Okay. So my other example is example two. <clears throat> so 1.7, 2.2, 3.9, 4.5, 5.5. So we have, you can see, have, see over here, X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5, five data. That means my N is equal to five. N equal to five, that means it is an odd number. So last time I had an even number, this time I have an odd number. So naturally I can find my X bar. X bar is equal to 1.7 plus 2.2 plus 3.9 plus 3.11 plus 3.11 plus 14.7 and divided by total number of observations that is equal to five. If you use your calculator, you're going to get that is equal to, I think, uh, 5.12. Yes, that's very simple. So this is called the mean. Mean. Then after I can go for the median. For median, as you know that we have to, one has to go through the ascending orders. So what's the lowest number? 1.7 is the lowest number. Then after second one is 2.2. Third one is, which one is low? 3.9. 3.9 is lower or 3.11 is lower? 3.11 is lower. 3.11. 3.11, 3.9, and then 14.7. 14.7. So this is my X1. This is my X2. This is my X3, my X4, and X5. 
right guys and x delta that is equal to because n is over uh, or that means i'm going to use that definition what definition xn plus 1 by 2 xn plus 1 divided by 2 so xn plus 1 that is uh, 7 plus 1 so x7 plus 1 is 8 divided by 2 that is equal to x4 so x4 is this one right guys <clears throat> so that is equal to uh, what is the definition let me just revise this thing guys just give me a minute uh, xn plus 1 divided by 2. So n plus 1, your n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 5 plus 1 is 6, I'm sorry. So 6 plus 1, that is equal to 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2, that is equal to 3. Because it is 3, so x3 is equal to 3.11. That means my mean is equal to 3.11. My mean is equal to 3.11. This happens because see the, see the difference. It's a big difference. Why? Because we have outliers over here. 1.7, 2. Point, these four numbers are really very close, but this number is really very big. They are not in the sequence. They are very far from the other numbers, and that's why it is called the outlier. So this is the outlier. Okay. And then after, I would like to go for the variance. The variance is <clears throat> S squared is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n here n is equal to 5 so let me write 5 x i minus x bar n square x i minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 if you use this one that means i'm going to get 1.7 minus mean is equal to 5.12 n square plus 2.2 minus 5.12 n square plus 3.11 minus 5.12 n square plus 3.9 minus 5.11 n square and plus 14.7 minus 5.11 n square and if you divide by here i think n minus 1 n minus 1 that is equal to 4 5 minus 1 that is equal to 4 if you use your calculator you will get 29.38 and the standard deviation that is given by s is equal to square root of s square and that is equal to square root of 29.38 and that is approximately equal to 5.42 5.42 and you can see over here that is really very close to my mean so this way you can find all these four terms. So now let me go back to my slides. I can give you a couple minutes or one half, half of the minutes and try to look at this part. Then after I will uh, switch off this whiteboard and again, I will go back to my slides. Okay guys, so let me save this one. SPNG and uh, then let me clear all. So now again, let me stop sharing this part and I would like to go for sharing the book part or our slide so. So we did all these things and uh, you can see this example is given over here. This example is done and now I would like to switch over to the last part Last part is, uh, you can see here, uh, visual diagnostics scatter plots. So some suppose you have some scatter data are given like this, one here, one here, one here. So it's not possible to cover all of these points. So what we are going to do, we are going to draw a straight line which covers almost all the points or other points, they are nearer to the straight line. They should not be very far from the straight line. So you can see over here, I just, chose this line, you can see this point is not on the line, but it's extremely nearer to the line. This is on the line, this is on the line, very near to the line, this is on the line. So I, I just try to cover most points over here in the scatter plots. Some points are there, you cannot cover these points. If you draw another line like this, in that case, you're going to lose these points. So just try to cover the points as much as possible. Exactly the same thing I did over here too. You can do something like this too. Right, <laughs> so that is not the good way. This is not the good way. This good way is to draw the line like this, which covers most of the points, and this one will be considered as the outlier. This is again the same kind of things. Look at over here. Here, if you you can draw a straight line like this, joining two points, just two points. Another point, they are far from this one. 
But instead of straight line, if you draw the curvature, just parabola like this, that means it covers almost all the points and which they are not covered, they are really very close to the curvature, parabola opens down. So, but that is not the linear regression. So we are right now working with just the linear part and that's why we don't do this thing. So this is just the visualization. Then after, I just would like to give you one example based on the car battery life. So what we mean by the car battery life and simultaneously, I would like to let you know the trimming, 10% trimming of car battery life. So here the car battery life is given like this, 2.2, you can count all these things in terms of years. So 2.2 years, one battery runs, 2.2, second battery runs, 3.4 years, 2.5 years, 3.3 years, 4.7 years, 4.1 years like this. So it's a really very, I don't know what to say, but you can see over here, all the things, they are given in a very random way. But the good thing is everything that is given in terms of I mean to say in between 1.5 and at the most I would say not less than 1.5 and not more than 5. So everything that is between 1.5 and 5. So just keep in mind this thing or you can take the picture of this one and then after I again would like to go for the whiteboard for this car battery life because without whiteboard probably it is hard to understand this thing. What we are going to do over here, in uh, we are going to give here the stem leaf plot, stem leaf plot and double stem leaf plot. What we mean by stem leaf plot, what we mean by double stem leaf plot, that's what I would like to convey you. The lowest number here is 1.6. So what I'm going to do, my first number, you can see 1.6 of first number before decimal, that I would consider as a stem. And the number after decimal, I would consider, I would like to consider as a leaf. So one will be the stem part, six will be the leaf part. Same here, 2.2, two will be in the stem part. Another two that will be right to after decimal will be in the leaf part, like this. And I would like to arrange all the datas all the data is given over here in stem and lift part. How to arrange in stem and lift part? I will let you know using this whiteboard. So let me again stop sharing this one and let me start my whiteboard. I hope you can see this whiteboard. Am I right? Can you see this whiteboard? Yes. Okay. Good. So let me start this one so that is called stem and leaf stem and l e a f stem and leaf stem and leaf let me put a line like this and let me put one line like this too stem and leaf that is somewhere like something like this too now if you look at the, those data it's not possible for me to share both the screens simultaneously so that's why i told you to take the picture but as I told you, the stem means before your decimal, so one is over here, and then after I had first number that was six, so 1.6, I would like to write like this. The second number, you have to arrange this leaf part in the ascending order, that means increasing order. So this is six, but the another number was 1.9. So I would like to write one, six, and then 1.9. So one is already over here, so six and nine. Then after I have another part that is, Two. That is two. And the first number here is 2.2. Second number here that is 2.5, then 2.6, 2 times 2.6, 2.6, and 2.9. So I would like to write like this. Then after I have third number, so let me write number three. Number three, lots of numbers are there for number three. 3.0, 3.02 3 times, so zero and zero. Then after one, 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 four times, so one, 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 four times. Then after two, two, and two, three times, three, three, and three, three times. And then after four, four, and four, three times, four, four, and four, three times. How many numbers are there? These numbers, total numbers are called frequency, F-R-E-Q-U-E-N-C-Y, frequency. So frequency over here, I would like to write here, there are two leaves, frequency means number of leaves. And here it is, there are uh, two leaves. And then after, here we have, I, I, I will consider this frequency later on, but you can count like this. Then after, let me go for number four. <coughs> number four I have, for number four, what I have, that is equal to one and one, so 4.1, 4.1, two times, so one, one, two, three, four, then five, seven, and seven. 
This is called one stem leaf plot. One stem leaf plot because we have just one stem and one leaf. <coughs> Sorry. The double stem leaf plot is like this. Those number who those decimals after decimal, if you have between one to five, you can consider that one. Just try to pay attention. That one over here with star. Nothing is over here between one to five. Number starts with six. So just forget it. But here you can write two star and number between one to five, two and five. These two numbers, sorry, two is there. So let me write it down two over here and let me remove these two. So number between, I would say 0 0.1 to 0 0.4, that will be with the star and number five to nine, 0 0.5 to 0 0.9, that will be with your two. <coughs> Same here. You can see uh, for... I think uh, I, yeah, this is my three star and I missed some of the numbers for three. So let me write those numbers too. This is 0 0.1 to 0.4. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4 over here. And we have 3.5, two times. So 3.5 that will come with three. So three, five, then we have one times six, then seven, seven and seven, three times seven, then eight, eight and nine, nine. 8, 8, and 9, 9. Total, there were 25. Frequency was 25. But out of this 25, some of them here, frequency is 1. Here, frequency is 4. Total frequency of 2 and 2 star, that was 5. So in double stem, double stem diff plot, it is 1 and 4. Total frequency over here in 3 star, that is equal to 15. And here it is 10, total 25. And here, total frequency, you can see over here, uh, one point, uh, so let me remove this part and let me write four star and four star one, one, two, three, four, because one, two, four is over here. So that is equal to five over here and three is over here. So what, what are the total frequency? Total frequency, if you take the sum of this one, sum of here to here, that is equal to 40. Sum from here to here is equal to 40. So this is my frequency. What is my relative frequency now? So relative frequency is relative frequency that is every number is divided by the total frequency. Two divided by 40 and that is given by, yes please, what is two divided by 40? Two divided by 40, if I'm not wrong, that is equal to 0 0.050. Am I right? So I can write yes. 0 0.050. You can use your calculator. One divided by 40, that means I'm going to get that is equal to 0 0.025. Then after four divided by 40, that is equal to 0 0.1. So 0 0.100, at least we go up to three decimals. Then after we have uh, 15 divided by 40. So uh, 15 divided by 40 means approximately we'll be getting 375. Then after 10 divided by 40, we are getting <coughs> How much, guys? That is equal to 0 0.25 and 0. Then after 5 divided by 40, we are getting approximately, yes, please, one zero point one two five. And then after finally 3 divided by 40, that is approximately equal to 0 0.075. 0 0.075. So this is called the relative frequency. Now you can see over here, guys. <clears throat> here I have all my numbers mainly based on leaf. The leaf numbers. Let me change the color. The leaf numbers are 69. Means we don't have anything between 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. And as I told you, my class starts with 1.5, 1.5 to 1.9. 1.5 1 to 1.9. <coughs> What is class midpoint? This is, I would say, class interval. Class interval. And then after I have class midpoint. Class midpoint. So 1.9 and 1. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 1.5 and 1.9. Midpoint is 1.9 plus 1.5 divided by 2. So naturally, you're going to get that is equal to 1.7. So 1.7. 1.7. This way, 
So 1.5 and 1.9, because two numbers are there, so frequency is two. 1.5 to 1.9, two numbers are there, frequency is two. Then after, I can go from, from 2 to 2.4. 2 to 2.4, just one number is there. Look at over here, just one number is there. Frequency is one, only one number is there. Frequency is one, right? And the class midpoint, if you want, you can write 2.2. 2.4 divided plus two divided by two, that is 2.2. Then after my third class interval will be 2.5 to 2.9. 2.5 to 2.9, you can see over here, 2.5 and 2.9, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So all numbers are lying over here. 2.5, 6, 7, 6, 6, and 9. All four numbers, they are lying in this class interval. Right? Then after I have <clears throat> 3. 0.0 to 3.4. You can see all the numbers, they are lying 3.0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. All the numbers are lying in this class interval. Then after I have 3.5 to 3.9, this is 4, please. 3.5 to 3.9, all the numbers, 5, 6, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, they are lying in this class interval. And then after I have uh, 4 to 4.0 to 4.4. You can see 4.1, 2, 3, 4, they are lying in this class interval. And finally, 4.5 to 4.9, all these numbers, five, seven, and seven, they are lying this class interval. If you want to go for this one, this midpoint, naturally you can find midpoint. It has nothing to do with all these things. So 2.7, then I can write 3.2, and then I can write 3.7, then I can write 4.2, and I can write 4.7, right? Oh, sorry, oops. So 4.7, my bad, 4.7, right guys? Using yeah. this one. Some people, they are writing this class interval over here at the first level, because now we are going to plot the graph using this one, using our class interval or using our midpoint. So what I'm going to do next, I hope you understood this one. Now I'm going to plot the histogram, the graph of this one using this class interval. See, using the data, how far one can go. I just use this stem leaf, then after double stem leaf, then after I found the frequency, then after I found the relative frequency, then after I found the class interval, the class midpoint, and now, I'm ready to go for the histograms of our figures. So may I erase this part? Okay, let's erase this one. And, but please keep in mind this thing. What I'm going to do, 1.5 and 1.9, I'm going to take this class interval, or you can say 1.7, then 2.2, 2.7, 3.2, 3.7, this one. With respect to my relative frequency, that was 0 0.05, 0 0.02. You can, one can go for relative frequency, one can go for frequency too, whatever you want. If somebody wants to go for frequency, sounds good. Relative frequency, sounds good. Anything is good, anything is good. Okay, I would like to go for relative frequency. So 1.7, between 1.7 means 1.5 and 1.9, I have the value 0 0.50, then 0 0.25, 0 0.1, like this. So my lowest number, I would say that is zero, then 0 0.125, then I will go for, 0 0.250, 0 0.375, something like this. So I'm going to take this portion, I'm going to take this portion with my class midpoints. And uh, let me just uh, go for the next slide now. <clears throat> so clear all. And now look at here, guys. You can plot something like this. Mm. 1.5 to 1.9, 1.9, then after we had two, right? So that's the difference. See, 1.9 and immediately two start. So that's why what I would like to say, not 1.5 to 1.9, but in between I have 1.7. That is the my class midpoint. Then after my second class midpoint was, so I'm going to go for this one. Then after second class midpoint was 2.2. Third class midpoint was 2.7. Fourth class midpoint was 3.2. Fifth class midpoint was four, sorry, 3.7. Then next one is 4.2. And the last one was 4.7. Right, guys? Right. And for 1.7, the value was really very, 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 very nearer, right? 
for uh, 1.7, I would say the 0 0.050. So let me just divide this one first. So this is 0 0.125. This is my relative frequency. Relative frequency. And this one is nothing but the relative frequency or the uh, battery life in years. Battery life in years. This is Wacom and Wacom is not that convenient. I have this Wacom and pen slide. So that's why my words are also, my wordings, they are also sliding anyway. And then after 0 0.250, 0 0.250, and let me go over here, somewhere here, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, somewhere here. Okay, now for 1.7 midpoint, I had frequency was two and relative frequency was 0 0.050. 0 0.050, that is 0 0.050, this is one to five. 0 0.050, that is somewhere over here. So I can say that here to here, 1.7, this part. Second one is 2.2, 2.2. 2.2 comes from 2 to 2.5, right? 2 to 2.4, 2 to 2.4. So this is the class midpoint. And my relative frequency was 0 0.025. 0 0.025, that is lower than this one. So 0 0.025, so it will go like this, 0 0.025. Then after my third relative frequency, that is for 2.7, and it is one, it is one. One is somewhere over here, so I would like to go for this one. One is here, and I will go up to here. Then after my next, I think I did something wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I have to remove this one. Uh, where is it? Uh, eraser, eraser. And let me erase this part. Let me erase this one. And uh, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, we are talking about the midpoint. So we have to stay with the midpoint. Okay. So my midpoint is over here. So my one value will be somewhere between here and here. And then after 2.7, it is one. So it is one is somewhere over here and 2.7 midpoint has to be in the middle. And then after 3.2, I have uh, 3.2 uh, is 0 0.75. So I can go like this. And I can do something like this. It, it comes over here. Again, I have to be very particular in the drawing, which is not that easy. So let me do like this. And let me again start drawing this part. Maybe I can give you some good picture. And oops. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's always. It's somewhere over here in the mid part, please. Okay. Then after we can go for 3.7 and 3. Point, uh, our class 3.7, that is related with 2.50. So that means I can go like this and I can go like this here in the middle. And then after second last one is, second last is 4.2 class width that is equal to 0 0.125 and 0 0.125 that is over here, 0 0.125. So class width is over here, 0 0.125. And finally, I have 0 0.075, 0 0.075 that is over here. You can see here, guys. <clears throat> now, this is the this is called the histogram. Okay. And in this histogram, uh, you can try to consider all the midpoints and try to grow, draw one curvature like this. You can see here, I have some kind of picture like this, but here it is not possible to cover all the points. And that's why you can see, I can do something like this. And this is called the normal distribution, which we are going to see later, normal distribution. 
this this one is not covered over here so that's why this is not actually normal distribution but on the right side it is okay but the left side is not normal left side it doesn't cover all the parts but whenever you have this type of portion it is called normal distribution so we have some pictures like this too suppose you have some like this and then after uh, something like this and then after you have like this this is called left skewed s k e w left skewed sometimes you have the normal cow like this but it is something like this this is called right skewed right skewed right so sometimes you may have left skewed sometimes you may have right skewed and this way you can have all the figures so this is actually nothing but your function fx fx and this is the battery life so you can predict something like this so box and whisker plots for the box plot that is given in this form let me just go back again to my slides and give you everything whatever i taught you let's go through everything in our presentation so our presentation is look at here guys now this is the battery life this is the stem plot one stem plot then after i divided this two to five to two star means up to one to five with star and rest of the things 0.6 and so on that is with two same here same here so this is the stem and uh, stem and leaf plot double stem and leaf plot that is over here that's what i explained to you then after we have the class frequency class intervals class midpoints frequency and this one and i plotted the graph using this one and this last column class midpoint and the last column and the graph is something like this look at over here that's what we ended up the frequency histogram that is considered like this and this frequency histogram you can go over like this this is the relative frequency histogram so i gave you two things in the book is just one thing the relative frequency histogram is given but here i gave you histogram as well as real relative frequency histogram and then after we are going to so i think that's it so this way you have the things based on the data sets data points now we are going to learn the new concept and that is called the five point summary and that would be the end of this chapter so five point summary five point summary that is very important in the real life problem in which we are going to see the first quadrile second quadrile that is always the median and the third quadrile first quadrile that is actually uh, first quadrile is actually the median uh, first quadrile that is the uh, median position and like this okay first median position second median third median like this so first quadrile i mean to say that 25 percentage of 25 percentile second quadrile that is 50th percentile that is your median and third quadrile that is 75 75th percentile that is third quadrile and max and mean value we are going to summarize these five things first quadrile second quadrile third quadrile max value and mean value and that's why it is called five point summary so let me give you the example for five point summary and you can apply that example for this battery life problem or some other problems too again let me go back to our uh whiteboard so my whiteboard is over here let me remove this part let me save this one and then after i can remove this part so clear and let's start again for the five point summary so let me start one by one i would like to provide the data as in the ascending order if it is not in the ascending order you have to mention in the ascending order you have to write it down in the ascending order because everything that is based on the median and median cannot be found without ascending order so let me start slowly this one suppose this is called five point summary five point summary and i have the data 67.5 it could be anything 67.5 68.5 71 72 75 then after i have 80.5 83.5 86 86.5 92.5 93 
and 94, and 94. So you can see over here, I have, how many data are there? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 data are there. And 12 is an even number. So n is equal to 12, that is an even number. And already data are there in ascending order. Ascending order n is equal to 12. So I'm going to first find the first median position that is called 50. Uh, let me write it down everything for you. First, M-E-D-I-A-N, median position. First median position, and that is called 50th percentile, 50 percentage, or you can say 58th percentile. 50th percentile, and that is called second quadrant. Second quartile, sorry. Q U A R T I L E, second quartile. And here it is n plus 1 divided by 2, n is 12 plus 1 divided by 2, that is equal to 13 divided by 2, and that is equal to 6.5. 6.5, that means somewhere over here. 6.5, somewhere over here. That means I'm going to take 80.5 plus 83.5 divided by 2, because 6.5, that is you know median, how to find median? Xn by two plus Xn by two plus one. So one and next and divided by two and divided by two. So I'm using the definition of median by definition of median. Definition of median. So that number is 82, 82.0. So in language, I would say that Suppose these 60, these 12 students are there in my class, and this is the score of these 12 students in their first exam. 67.5, this first one is 67.5, guys, please. 67.5, 68.5, 71, 72, 75, 80.5, 83.5, 86, 86.5, 92.5, 93, and 94, right? These are the 12 students' scores in, in, my, in the first exam. So this represents that whatever I found here, the meaning of this one is on the exam, I would say that on the exam, on the exam, about 50% of the students, about 50% of the students scored 82.0 points or 82 points, I would say, or lower. 82 points or lower, right? 50% of the students, they got 82 points or lower. Now I would like to go for the next one that is called second median position. Second median position. And that is called, let me put one star over here. Let me put one star over here just to separate it out. That is called first quartile. First quartile. First quartile. Or you can say 25 percentage or you can say 25th percentile. 25th percentile. Now that means first quartile, or the second quartile, first quartile, that means look at my cursor. That is on my left side, my left side. So I'm working only between this, between six to seven and this part, only this part. Here my n is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would say that my n is equal to six. n equal to six, so n plus one by two, n plus one by two, that is equal to seven by two, and seven by two, that is equal to 3.5. And 3.5, that is somewhere over here. That is somewhere over here, 3.5. That means I'm going to take, again, by definition of median here and here, both places, by definition of median, I would say that 71 plus 72 divided by two, and that is equal to, what is the average? 71.5, 71.5. So the meaning is, let me plot like this, 71.5. On the exam, on the exam, I would say about, 25 percentage of the students twenty five percentage of the students scored seventy one point five points or lower or lower then after I would like to go for 
थर्ड मीडियन पोजीशन थर्ड मीडियन पोजीशन दैट इज एक्चुअली सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंटेज और यू कैन से सेवेंटी फिफ्थ परसेंटाइल परसेंटाइल और यू कैन से दिस इज द फर्स्ट क्वार्टर सो दिस थर्ड क्वार्टर थर्ड मीडियन और थर्ड क्वार्टाइल क्यू यू ए आर टी आई एल ई थर्ड क्वार्टर आइल in this third quartile that means now we are going to work same way we are going to work on right side this side we are going to work we worked on this one now we are going to work on this side so here the median position was 1 2 and 3 points on the left side same way we can go 1 2 and 3 points 1 2 and 3 points on the right side so i'm going to get my median position over here so that means i can say that my it is 6 was over here and then 1 2 and 3 points i went back for the first median position the third median i have to go three points the right side so 3.5 that is equal to 9.5 and 9.5 as i told you that is that lies over here and therefore i have 86.5 plus by definition of median 92.5 and divided by 2 and that is equal to 179 by 2 and that is equal to 89.5 that means i would say that on the exam the meaning is on the exam about 75 percentage of the student of the students scored 89.5 points or lower that is the meaning what is the minimum number the minimum number is minimum number in this uh, whole scenario 67.5 67.5 and what is the maximum number the maximum number is 94 so this is we have found this 1 2 3 4 and 5 star and star so this five points and that's why it is called five point summary if you want to plot the graph of this five point summary it will look like this one just look at over here guys uh, it will look like this one this five point summary i don't have enough space but i don't want to leave this page so let me just draw something like this and i would like to start from 70 then 80 or i would say i think 75 75 80 90 95 and 100 and 100 good my minimum number is what is minimum 67.5 67.5 that is somewhere over here somewhere over here so let me put one line and i would like to say minimum minimum my maximum number is 94 94 that is somewhere over here let me put the line please don't count this line let me erase this one something let me erase this line okay that is better just to avoid the confusion 94 that is somewhere over here so let me put one line over here and that is i would say maximum i would say this is maximum then after i have first quartile first quartile is 82 82 is somewhere over here let me put the line over here 82 this is called my first quartile first quartile then after i have the second quartile first quartile there is a medium position uh first no that is second quartile i'm sorry first median position this is the first uh, this is not first quartile this is called the second quartile actually second quartile because it is 82 so it's a second quartile i'm sorry 82 is the second quartile right 82 there is somewhere over here second quartile my first quartile that is over here 71.5 70 is over here 71.5 that is over here so let me draw the line like this this is my first quartile and my third quartile that is 89.5 so 80 and 89 is somewhere over here so 89.5 this is my third quartile so third quartile i am going to put the box over here for first second and third quartile and my mean and max i just would like to draw the line like this so this is my call five point summary this is the five point summary 
first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and five point summary. And five point summary. So that is the end of this first chapter. And I told you that I'm going to give you some of the things based on um, what uh, our uh, sampling methods. I wanted to take this one previously, but I think that is fine. Let me stop sharing this part. And uh, so let me save this one. Okay. And now let me close this one, stop this one. And let me share some other things that is called this one. This is the last part for today's class. So observational study, observational study. Uh, let me just make sure that whatever I'm going to tell you that is all are covered. Yes, all the things are covered over here. So observational study, the observational study, researchers observe or measure and record characteristics of the observed or sample individuals, but do not attempt to influence or modify these characteristics. They can just measure it, but they, they are not, the samples are not influenced by the observer. They cannot do, they can just observe it, just like the media people. Media people can go to any of the event and try to take the collect the data, try to collect the necessary informations, but they are not not allowed to involve or interfere in any of the uh, process going on over there. So that is called the ob observational study. Then after the usefulness are surveys data resulting from the direct observation and recording of characteristics of the observed individuals. Usefulness of data collected from the observational study depends on how accurately the sample represent the population. Some channels are presenting some event very nicely. The same event is not being presented well by the other channel, something like that. So that's what we mean by the observational study. The key is careful random selection of the sample individuals from the well-defined population. How carefully you are selecting your random selections, that everything based on that one. The big concern big concern with observational studies is the lack of control of over variables that influence results, but that were not identified and measured as part of the data collection. So that's what we mean by the observational study. Then after second one is the representative sample. A truly representative sample would have the same characteristics of the population in the same proportion as they exist, exist in the population. Since each perfection is not possible, we hope for samples that have the characteristics of the population in similar proportions to those in the population. And though it is impossible to guarantee a representative sample, the best way to achieve one is through the use of a random sampling plan. So random sampling, we already discussed last time, random sampling plans. The first one, first random sampling plan is the sample, simple random sample. And that's what we discussed last time. The detail of this simple random sampling, you can consider this part in, as the beginning and then after you can go over whatever I taught you today. The sample of the individuals is chosen in such a way that the, every sample of a given size has an equal chance of being selected. That's what we learned yesterday. And we start with the sampling frame, a numbered list of the numbers of the population. I told you just some one population, one big state, and then after we are going to go to some of the counties, some of the localities, churches, schools, hospitals like this, and try to take the analysis of the people, those who are eligible to vote, to whom they are going to vote for this next coming election. So like this. So there's a sample random sampling, simple random sampling. Second one is systemic, uh, systematic sampling. In systematic sampling, what happens that we start with the sampling frame, a simple system is used to choose the sample after picking a random starting place, such as selecting over 10th or every 50th member of the population. That means now suppose we go to the one hospital, we go to one hospital and suppose 100 people are there. We are not going to count, take the opinion of all 100 people, but what we think that all 100 people, they are in a row. So we are going to say something like this. This systematic means we have a specific system to select the sample. So my system right now is like this. I'm going to count every fifth of the nurses working in the hospital and ask, their, ask about their opinion for the next coming, next coming election. 
every fifth, one, then six, then 11, something like this. So one, for one, five, 10, 15, 20, like this. So, and then after I'm going to collect the data because it's not very time consuming, absolutely impossible to collect all those population. So that's why we can make a sampling in a systematic way. And that's why it is called the systematic samples. Another thing, suppose <coughs> uh, you make an arrangement, there are 10 boys and 10 girls in one section. And suppose teacher makes an arrangement that one boy, one girl, one boy, one girl, the sitting arrangement is arranged like this. So that is again called a systematic sampling. And he is going to pick just the second row. Then after, once everything is arranged, thereafter he's going to pick second row and ask the questions. So that is called the systematic sampling. Plenty of examples are there. Then after third sampling method is a stratified sampling. The method is employed when there are concern or expectation that are that uh, that there are differences amongst distinct subgroups of similar individuals. Difference of similar individuals. See, we have suppose now we go to the hospital, we have. 100 nurses working over there, and we made a group of uh, 20, so we have five groups, right? Now, one group says that I want to go for Republican. Second group says that I want to go for, we want to go for uh, Democrats, like this. So, a method is employed when there are concerns or expectation that there are differences among each subgroups. So, these are the subgroups, and there is the difference. Uh, in this, once we have a group, then after in the group, what will happen? Let me just go into the detail of this one. We have 100 nurses, five groups, each contain 20 nurses, each contains 20 nurses. Out of these 20 nurses, suppose 12 nurses in first group, 12 nurses says that, 12, 12 nurses say that I want to go for Democrat. And remaining eight say that I want to go for Republican. See here. So there is a difference of opinions in the subgroups. So within a population. So after first identifying the subgroups, a random sample is selected. Randomly, you can ask these guys within each subgroup. And this resulting sample consisting of all the individuals selected from the each of these subgroups. So from each of the subgroups, you can pick a couple guys, three, four, five guys, and try to take their opinion like this. Some examples are there. The strength of this method is that it guarantees the representation of all the identified subgroups, even if the subgroup size within the population vary dramatically, right? That's fine. Third one is cluster sampling. This cluster means here we have subgroups with similar individuals, right? Here we have slight difference. We have some specific cluster. Cluster means again subgroups, but in a systematic method. So cluster is really very important. This method also involves the identification of subgroups, but these subgroups or clusters are not made up of similar individuals. They are not similar now. They are some different subgroups are, that means in subgroup, once you have suppose doctors, all the doctors are there or nurses are there. Some of the nurses are RNA. Some of them are junior than there. So mix of all the nurses, mixture of all the nurses. So subgroups are not made up of similar individuals. Individuals within the subgroups or clusters are often quite diverse, but the grouping clustering is often based on the common circumstances or situation. That is all the people of uh, on a given flight from point A to point B would be a cluster. Point A to point B, all the people flying or traveling, all the people living, uh, traveling, they are the clusters. So all people on a given flight from point A to point B would be a cluster. All people living on the same floor of the same dormitory would be a cluster, right? You see, all people are flying from one a, point A to point B. Now people, some of them could be doctors, some of them could be engineers, some of them could be teachers. So you have mixture of peoples, right? Not particular groups, as I told you that in last example, that all the nurses, no. Now you have mixing of peoples. Or in nurses, RNA, junior nurses, senior nurses, like this. Anyway, registered nurses, anyway, like this. So cluster means all kinds of mixtures. And that's why that is more important in statistical study than the previous one. Third one is the convenience sampling. The sample is made up of the individuals that are, that the researchers chooses to include because they are easy to convenient to access, right? Now researchers have the, uh, has an opportunity to choose the samples, right? So that is not that good because sometimes researchers may be some biased, okay? He intentionally goes to 
or try to uh, choose the people, those who are in favor of his opinion. So it may be possible, so that's why that is not that important. So, but anyway, there's another part of the convenient sampling. The sample is made up of those individuals that are research that the researchers chooses to include because they are easy to easy or convenient to access. Such individuals are often in the common location or have a common group membership, such as people who happen to be in the same class. In cases like that described, this approach necessarily leads to a sample of individuals that clearly have an at least some common characteristics and therefore do not reflect the opinion of the broader population. Look at over here. One has to be taken care of, one has to be particular about this thing. Finally, voluntary response. That means now samples themselves be volunteers to be a part of the process. The researchers issue a general appeal to some populations via email. Suppose I send one email to all my students and that's not mandatory for them to answer. That suppose I ask them that, uh, would you like to uh, work in the classroom or would you like to work in the laboratory, right? Now, some people, they respond, I would like to work in the classroom. Some people say that I would like to work in the laboratory. Some people don't respond. I, that's fine because that's not mandatory, right? So that is called the voluntary response. They are themselves volunteers to answer this question. The researchers issue a general appeal to some population via email, by web survey, by television, or wait for individuals to respond. Those individuals that respond to the, uh, to the appeal, who are often those with the strongest opinion, become the sample. Okay. Since the results over represent those with the strongest opinion, they do not reflect the opinions of any broader population. And I would like to give you one example. So one example over here, based on different. Uh, sample method and I think that will give you a better idea and we'll stop. An administrator obtains a sample of one university, JMU, students by randomly selecting 15 students from, it, it could be any university, right? Some university and the freshman, sophomore, junior and senior. See, administrator opt ob obtains a sample from the students from the university randomly selecting 15 students. That means each, everyone has equal chance of being selected. It looks like simple sampling method, but he has made this, he has, he has some, stratify, some strategy. He is going to select from each class, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Now it's a strategy. That's why it is a stratified. An administrator uses a random sample generator to obtain 60 numbers, then matches whose numbers to those on our numbers, number rosters of the university, thus identifying 60 students from, from, uh, from the simple uh, sample. It's a simple random sample random because each everyone has equal chance of being selected of the university. Then the next one is the sample administrator speaks to the first 100 students coming through the back entrance of the hall. See, those who are coming from back and those 100 students, he is going to speak those 100. 101, he is not going to speak. So that is called the convenience because now administrator chooses the sample. The administrator takes a number of list enrolled in the university students and then select the sample by randomly choosing one students at random from among the first 100 and then taking every 100. See, now all the students are there, right? But he made the system that he is going to choose among the first hundred and then taking every hundred name, hundred, then two hundred, then three hundred, like this, every hundred name. So that is called the systematic because now it's a system is involved. He made a system, the administrator, he made a system. So that's why it's a systematic random sampling. And the last one is administrator sends an email, as just now I told you, to 100 students and that respond from the sample. It's the voluntary samples because it's not. It require everyone to respond. And the last one is the administrator identifies three courses within each department, three courses, mathematics, English, and biology that have the most diverse student and then selects one of those students or courses at random. Now he picks one of the courses from random in which you have mixture of students. Some, are, some of them are math major, English major, biology major like this from the department. All the students in the selected courses from each department becomes a sample cluster because now in the cluster is a pop mixed population of math, English, and biology. So it's a cluster, right? 
So this way, sample methods are being identified. So I think, guys, uh, probably this methods, all these things, this is the end of the first chapter. Next time we are going to start the probability. Let me stop over here today. I gave you almost one hour uh, 20, sorry, one hour 15 minutes. So let me stop over here. Thank you. And uh, next time we are going to start, please try to go through this one. And next time we are going to start the next chapter, that is probability, chapter number two. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, I'll Thank see you, you after a few days, after a couple of days.